going to start by asking, following The Secret in Their Eyes, uh, yes. which is obviously quite a hard-hitting, bleak drama, uh, this is quite different. What tempted you into the, into the world of children's animation? <coughs> In fact, this was a parallel to The Secret in the Rice. We were developing The Unbeatables as we were making The Secret in the Rice. And I guess that uh, as a compensation for so much darkness and so much uh, perversion in that, in that movie, uh, we wanted to make something more upbeat and something also for my kid. I had just recently had a kid. So <coughs> we started developing this. I always wanted to get into animation, and there we went. Do you take you sort of take your kid into consideration when making this? Do you do you see him see your child so as the kind of perfect target audience of what they might like with the representative of what kids across the world might like? The hardest thing in making this movie was to get into the mind of an eight year old, ten year old, or twelve year old, because there are also bigger differences between an eight year old and a twelve year old than between a twelve year old and an adult. So that was the hardest thing because it was the first time I did that. Uh, all the time we were we were thinking. Will this be funny for parents and for kids at the same time? You know, because we also wanted to include the parents. Um, and that was the, the first time I ever did that. And it was the hardest thing, really. So um, it, took, it took some work. It took a lot of uh, bringing kids to watch the, the, the gags while we were making them. Things that we thought that were funny. If, would they work with kids? You know, and that kind of testing. And I was wondering as well, I mean, having won the, the Oscar, of course, for Secret in Their Eyes, <coughs> do you feel more of a, a pressure with, with this kind of next project or when releasing this, knowing that there was more eyes on you, so to speak? Well, um, not really, not really. Uh, the, the Oscar is a, is a great uh, compliment. It was fantastic for the movie, but you try to sort of block it out of your mind uh, and, uh, and try to do something that will surpass your own work not you know that's always been the bar you know not mm, try not to think of what others are doing because if not you drive yourself nuts and just going back to the, the unbeatables of course it's based on a short story how did you come to be aware of this story the the short story in which in which the unbeatables is based is very very short and very very generic it's a monologue of a football player and uh, uh, as the monologue goes uh, goes on you realize that it's a foosball it's really a table football player there's no story no uh, no team no villain no nothing so we really had to recreate it and we recreated it in a way that would appeal to the kids and to the adults but also in a way that it wasn't about football there had to be more emotional things involved it was about to me, the main theme in the movie is really trying to find your best self within yourself. You know, when, the, when life throws at you these unexpected challenges uh, and you have to find resources that you didn't even know you had within yourself to uh, overcome them. And the, the film is, is really funny as well. And the screening I was in had loads of, sort of critics laughing away at some of the jokes. Great. I was just wondering, when you were sort of constructing the film, do you bear in mind how other countries and other audiences across the world might perceive it, because obviously comedy has to translate across... You, you'd be amazed at how uh, uh, universal comedy is, really. Uh, I laugh... I, I, you know, I started this, uh, this day doing my Benny Hill impersonation, because you know, you know that in Argentina, Benny Hill was bigger than the Beatles. So, so <laughs> you know, uh, we see an, an, an Oscar Wilde play and we laugh at it and, and, and its quips and the irony and the sardonic thing. We also, have a lot of, we also have a lot of British influences, but also have a lot of Italian influences and Jewish influences in, in our comedy. So it's pretty universal, you know, we, we have a cult of sarcasm and irony, and that is the humor that, that, uh, that um, rides along the movie, you know, and, and it, it, it's easy to translate. And, I guess also and when, when it doesn't translate, we create it. Yeah. We <laughs> I was going to say, what also helps, I mean, football is, I mean, it's a cliche to say it's that kind of universal sport, but it truly is, isn't it? I mean, this is a film that can be appreciated by, by anyone. Yes. Sport. Yes, and it takes place in a, in a, in a, in a land of its own. Uh, it doesn't take place in any, in any known country. Yeah. And, I mean, you were sort of, in regards to the, uh, the villain of the piece, uh, were there any footballers that, that sprung to mind or any <laughs> that you based him on? Well, who are you thinking about? There's actually no. I don't. I I would not go as far as to say that we inspired ourselves into a real footballer, but uh, a real player inspired himself in the in the movie because I heard that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo uh, made a museum about himself in his hometown, 
three months after the movie opened, so maybe he, he watched it. <laughs> Just go back to the, the comedy side again. Yes. There's some great British names on board in regards to the kind of the dubbed version over here. Yes. Like Rob Brydon and you know Ralph Little, for instance. Do you have any say in who might get cast in Britain? Or are you aware of who these people are? And, no, uh, totally, totally. Um, I'm Anthony Head. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the trip um, and of British comedy in general. So I knew also Ralph Little. Uh, I knew many of the actors and other actors. I heard the voices, you know, when we did the casting, and uh, I was uh, very much on board for the for the choice. And I'm not sorry at all. On the contrary, they're great, great things, and many, 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 many of them improve on the original. So, just find a quite generic question to end on. But what's next for you? Have you got any uh, plans for the future? I am writing a script. I, you know, I'm, I I directed a play after finishing. Uh, as an antidote for so many computers, I directed a play because in theater, if you want to move something, you just have to hang it from a rope and pull. And uh, I like that. Uh, <laughs> so I did that, and I'm beginning, a, a, I'm beginning to write a script, and I'll probably be shooting in 2016. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.